evening and uh, welcome to the uh, October regular meeting of the Hoboken Board of Education. Uh, Mr. Moffitt, we'll start with the uh, statement of compliance, please. Yes, sir. This meeting is being held in conformity to the Open Publics Meeting Act. The proper public notice of this meeting was published in the local papers on October 7, 2017 and October 8, 2017. If any board member or member of the public in attendance believes that this meeting is in violation of the Open Public Meetings Act, the Hoboken Board of Education requests that they make a statement at this time. The board wishes to make those in attendance aware that this meeting is being recorded on video and will be broadcast by the board at a later date on cable television channel 77 and Fios channel 46. The full meeting recording will also be made available on board docs which can be accessed through the district's homepage. The Hoboken Board of Education is committed to preserving the decorum of the public process and is mindful that we live in, a, in the age of electronic uh, computers, cell phones, and other communication devices. Nevertheless, we respectfully request that all meeting participants kindly silence their electronic devices during the course of the meeting, and if use of the device is necessary, we ask that you please leave the meeting room if you need to conduct personal business. You please rise, salute to the flag. Thank you. And the uh, roll call, please. Ms. Angley? Here. Mr. Biancamano? Present. Ms. Delera? Here. Ms. Evans? Here. Mr. McNamara? Here. Ms. Sobolov? Here. And Mr. Kluffel? Here. We do have a quorum. Uh, first item on the agenda tonight is the uh, student recognitions. Uh, Mr. Fitzhugh, we'll turn it over to you. Good evening. Good evening. The student of the month recipient from Joseph F. Brandt Primary School, Grade 1, Vivian Kodak. Vivian here. Is Vivian Kodak here? Please <laughs> join Mr. Fitzhugh. <laughs> Vivian is always ready to lend a helping hand to a friend in need. Whether it be an offering, a kind word, or helping a friend when they are having a challenge with an assignment in class. Her willingness to help others and her kind-hearted personality immediately stood out to Ms. Malak within the first few days of school. Vivian's careful, diligent way in which she goes about working with others on their classwork is a true testament to her strong work ethic. This quote comes from Ms. Rodriguez Gomez. She states, Vivian embodies all of the characteristics of a brand buddy. Every time that I see her smile, it fills her heart with joy. It is, a true, it is truly a pleasure to have her at Brandt. We are the lucky ones. Student achievements. Vivian displays random acts of kindness towards classmates as well as her teacher. Vivian puts forth her best effort on every assignment she is given, no matter what the task is. She is very diligent in her work and demonstrates a growth mindset by trying her best each and every single day. What makes this student a powerful asset to the Brandt Elementary School? Vivian's kind-hearted personality and willingness to help her classmates and her teacher are truly what makes her an asset, not just in the classroom, but the entire Brandt community. Here at Brandt, we believe in instilling a growth mindset in our young students and the care and effort with which Vivian goes about each and every single day in terms of her schoolwork and with her peers. Again, we celebrate Vivian for this great honor. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Wait a 
The Student of the Month recipient from Calabro Elementary for September 2017, Axel Holstrom. Axel is an outstanding student who is well deserving of this honor. He is part of the gifted and talented program and has always been a member of the Collaborative String program and chorus. In the classroom, Axel always strives to set goals and conquer new challenges. He inspires his classmates to be the best versions of themselves. Axel loves to read and incorporate technology into his learning and he's a role model to his peers and is humorous and char charming as well as um, great, and those are characteristics that cannot be overlooked. In the fourth grade classroom, Axel has come to be known as Mr. Nationwide because of his love for traveling and exploring new places. He hopes to continue traveling and learning for the rest of his life. Outside of school, Axel plays hockey and tennis. When Axel grows up, he dreams of being a plastic surgeon and continue to live happily. Dr. Vespignani quotes, when you think of the qualities you look for in a student of the month, Axel embodies all the attributes for this tremendous recognition. His commitment to learning day in and day out is noteworthy. It is clear that Axel takes his education seriously while also learning to enjoy the process. Axel, quote, Axel is quoted as saying, education is the most powerful tool we can use to change the world. Congratulations, Axel, on this great honor. The Student of the Month recipient for Connors Elementary, Mia Canales. Grade two student. <laughs> Mia, come on up. <laughs> Mia has been an extremely enthusiastic second grader so far. In no time, she has acclimated herself to our second grade classroom routines and activities like a champion. She exhibits such a love for learning new things. Mia strives to participate within all subject areas and does a great job with all tasks and assignments. Not only is she a hard and diligent worker, she wants her peers to be as well. Mia is always helping a friend at her group when they need it, using words of encouragement. Mia also displays a positive and cheerful disposition when coming to school. She is super polite, you can always hear her using manners, whether it is to say thank you to someone helping her or asking if someone is okay if they seem upset. She promotes positivity by complimenting her peers on their achievements and cheering friends up whenever they need it. Mia is the perfect addition to our school community. Mia likes to color and play with her sister, and her favorite subject is art. She would love to be a singer when she grows up. Mia also likes to play softball and hopes she is signed up for it again. Justin Bieber is her favorite artist and she loves to do flips. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Dr. Pollen shares that whenever she visits Mia's classroom, she is hard at work. She always greets Dr. Pollens with a smile and shows her the assignment that she's working on in class. Dr. Pollens feels that Mia is a pleasure to have as a student at Connors Elementary School. And Mia, your favorite quote is, I feel so happy at Connors School. Congratulations, Mia, on this great honor. The Wallace Student of the Month for September 2017, Madeline Gallagher. The Wallace School of the Month, Student of the Month, is Madeline Gallagher, a three-year-old, almost four-year-old girl in Ms. Looney's preschool class. Ms. Looney nominated Madeline for the Student of the Month because of her hard work during her mathematics and language arts programs, during circle time, and in her extracurricular activities. She has the busiest schedule and handles it like a trooper. 
She has learned to read many words, to count with one another, as well as to color, describe pictures, and describe what's going on around her. As said best by Principal Shannon, whenever I see Maddie, she always puts a smile on my face. <laughs> she is one of the brightest rays of sunshine we have at our school. I am so proud of her for earning this honor. Madeline enjoys many activities and is interested in many things. She loves to do art projects that include coloring and painting, and she has fun doing math with counting bears or pigs. She also enjoys playing with Mickey Mouse, as well as riding on the scooter, being chased and having a race. She has a love for animals and has fun riding her horse, Winnie, and telling her to go and stop. Her parents and grandparents are her biggest cheerleaders. Madeline is a delight to have in class, and Miss Looney is so incredibly proud of all that she has accomplished thus far. She is an asset to the classroom and the student body as she greets all the new faces at Wallace Elementary. Mads is, has a giggle and a smile that are contagious. As a celebrity at Wallace, she is going places. Congratulations to Maddie, the Wallace Student of the Month for September. We're so very proud of you. Pleasure. Hoboken Middle School Student of the Month, Taylor Shaw. The Hoboken Middle School Student of the Month is Taylor Shaw. Taylor is recommended by her physical education teacher, Mr. Ponce. Taylor is nominated because of her outstanding attitude, attendance, cooperation, and citizenship. Taylor is a model scholar that enjoys participating in sports and fitness challenges in her physical education class. She is an outgoing and committed student day in and day out. Taylor is always ready, always prepared, and giving 110% on any given activity. She is actively and is involved with every activity, expressing her curiosity and interest. Your principal, Dr. Davis, states, a smile is the light in your window that tells others that there is a caring, sharing person inside. Taylor is the eponym of this quote. I've had, this, I've had several opportunities to observe her in different settings as she interacts with her classmates during collaborative work assignments. Her positive influence is contagious. Taylor is an asset to the Hoboken Middle School community because she's a positive role model who keeps a smile on her face. She shows a great sense of community pride inside and outside of the classroom setting. She demonstrates the school's core values of being respectful, engaged with her positive attitude and actions towards her learning, her school responsibilities, and her relationships with her peers and students. Your per her personal hobbies are the following. She loves to play sports. So which sport? Soccer. Soccer, okay. Your favorite uh, subject is social studies, and the sports interests are soccer and basketball. Her musical interest varies. Her college choices are Syracuse or Miami, and her future career aspiration is to be a broadcaster or professional soccer player. When asked about a quote when describes her school, Taylor stated, school is a place I love coming to. When asked about the honor of receiving the recognition, she said, it's exciting to receive the student of the month. Hoboken Middle School is so proud of Taylor and her accomplishments. She exhibits the true essence of a Hoboken Middle School pride student. Perseverance, respect, integrity, dedication, excellence. Congratulations from your school and from our district. The Hoboken High School Student of the Month recipient, Sophia Melfi. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm nominated by Mr. Chang and Ms. Um, Polo Zaleski. Um, they stated that um, Sophia 
only knowing her for a short time, they have seen her um, energetic shine to all of her classmates. She encourages kids during class, follows directions, and is respectful and always smiling. They think that she shows leadership in helping her friends be prepared for class and is always giving her best effort, not the minimum. Mr. Chang stated, Sophia is considerate to others, caring, inclusive, hardworking, and has an overall outstanding academic achievement. Sophia is a leader within our school community. Sophia's hobbies include musical theater and is an avid reader. Principal Pika Pietra stated, Sophia has been with us since seventh grade and has been a pleasure having her. She is such a strong academic student, but loves her theater. I really got to see her talent last year in the Peter Pan production. With all the work that went into the production, she manages to remain an honorable student. What always strikes me is when I see her in school, the lunchroom, class, she's always engaged in conversation with friends, classmates, and is always smiling. I look forward to seeing her grow over the next four years. Sophia's post-secondary plans include applying to Yale and Columbia University to study theater arts. That's awesome. When notified about the award, Sophia said, I am very surprised and honored to win this award. Sophia would like to thank Mr. Chang for recommending her for this great honor and also for him being a great teacher. Congratulations, Sophia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fitzhugh, and uh, congratulations to the students. Uh, I think uh, we also have a, another uh, special recognition that Dr. Johnson has uh, for the board and for the public tonight. Can I do that now? Okay. Just ask your patience for one moment. Good evening, Board of Ed and Dr. Johnson. I'm Angeline Velosi. Deja Serrano. And I'm Ariana Henriquez. And this is our biology teacher, Mrs. Addy, who introduced us to this program. Um, and we're here this evening to present to you our thanks for allowing us to um, participate in this great summer experience and to make it all possible. Okay, so the Waxman Institute Summer Experience was a two-week research project that had students, like us, isolate genes from Landoltia punctata, which is duckweed, a type of plant species. After isolating the genes, we analyzed the DNA sequences of those genes, compared the sequences um, of the DNA of those genes and then to other species and then figured out if the genes coded for protein using online software. The reason we did this was to compare the proteins and see if they can function in humans and if they could possibly help in the medical field. Um, once completed, we submitted our analyzed DNA sequences to the National Center for Biotechnology Information for Publishing, which is a database where scientists from all over the nation um, publish DNA sequences so that they have more information and they can compare it to other species. And so on our first day, um, we worked with students from all over New Jersey and other states like North Carolina and Pennsylvania. And our first uh, introductory activity was that we had to model DNA. 
Um, and we were also assigned uh, lab partners and lab benches, and uh, those are the partners that we would have to stay with um, for the rest of the program. Okay. Um, in the first photo, you'll see Angeline activating restriction enzyme by uh, pipetting PVU2 restriction enzyme into her cell culture. In the second photo, you'll see me pouring a gel into a box, which is uh, the box that allows the gel to cool down and harden so we can use it for um, um, electrophoresis. And in the third photo, you see Ariana loading her gels into, sorry, her, loading her DNA into the wells within the gel. Okay, so after we perform the gel electrophoresis, it's just a technique that allows you to um, see the DNA fragments so that we know like the length, the number of base pairs in it. Um, so after doing that, we performed a polymerase chain reaction. That's just another technique that allows you to make multiple copies of DNA so that you have more variation. Um, and we loaded the samples into the gel and our results are shown in the pictures above. Each band represents DNA fragments of different lengths, and each DNA, uh, each DNA sample is from a different cell colony. So we compare DNA from different colonies for more variation. And then on the right, you'll see a restriction digest. So we added enzymes to the cells in order to cut it. There are two lanes in the picture. One is marked U, and it shows just the normal DNA. That's just like a control lane. And then the ones marked C were cut with the enzymes. And this allowed us to compare to see um, if our DNA had sites where the restriction enzymes can go in and cut, and that way we can alter the sequence. And so, um, uh, so everyone in the program had to share a spreadsheet, and on that spreadsheet, we put all of our results and data, and then we would have to present it in front of, in front of the class. And um, after we present, the teacher, Dr. Rashan, uh, would make a decision whether or not uh, we should sequence them and send it and publish to the NCBI. And um, uh, yeah, so we ran our gel, and these are our results. Okay, um, these photos here are uh, all of us presenting our our um, data that we collected from running our gels. And basically, we had it explained to our peers um, the size of each DNA fragment, which uh, allowed us to progress within our research. OK, so um, after the two-week program on the last day, we were able to analyze our genomic sequences and determine if it coded for a protein. And then we presented these posters, so we all have our own posters. Okay. So the protein that was found within my research was histomycine methyltransferase, which is um, its function is to repress or activate genes and transcription, which also plays a key role in gene regulation. And the protein has uh, been used in cancer research because it's been found within different types of cancers. And they believe it to be um, one of the causes of the formations of tumors. So the scientists are trying to make a modification of this protein to um, prevent the, the activation of gene regulation, which allows the cancer cells to um, replicate and stop those formations of tumors. Okay, the protein that um, my gene sequence coded for was MIAMP1, which is an antimicrobial peptide that functions in the immune system of plants and animals. We found this in the... Um, sequence from the Landoltia punctata, which is the duckweed, but it can also be found in humans. So it's in the immune system. When a pathogen is detected, this um, cell, well, the cell will produce the gene that produces this protein, and it will go and attack the disease cells. Um, and this protein is currently very prevalent to science because it could potentially replace antibiotics. Um, as of now, a current health issue is biofilm or bacterial colonies forming on medical implants. And as of now, antibiotics are used to help, but a protein like this could be more effective in targeting and um, getting rid of the bacteria. And so my protein was nucleotidal transferase. So what that is is that it's basically a family of enzymes that would help repair damaged DNA. 
Now what damaged DNA can do is that it could lead to serious mutation, mutations and uh, one of the most more known ones is cancer. And so nucleotidal transferase can help repair and remove incorrectly matched or mutated uh, nucleotides. And so in recent studies, um, nucleotidal transferase actually um, helped scientists um, discover a treatment and uh, for uh, herpes, so it's definitely made a step towards um, science and new discoveries. Okay, so being a part of this summer program was very rewarding and it truly helped me reconsider what I want to do in the future. Working in the lab every day, meeting new people, and learning new information during lectures really gave me a feel for college life and I enjoyed every minute. Also, being able to have our data published on the national database is really amazing and it can help us with our college applications. So thank you so much to the Board of Ed, Dr. Johnson, Mrs. Picapietra, and Mrs. Addy for helping my peers and I experience this great opportunity. Um, I would like to thank Ms. Addy, Dr. Johnson, Ms. Um, Picapietra, and the Board of Education for giving me this opportunity. Um, this is one of the highlights of my summer, and in the future, I would like to work in the medical field. So this definitely gave me a taste to what I would like in the future, and working in a college definitely made it 10 times better and gave me a better understanding. So I would like to thank you all again for making this possible. I want to begin by acknowledging the great opportunity you provided me with. The program was an amazing experience. My favorite aspect was definitely the labs that we um, did within the program. It was also great to meet new people from different schools and make friends. Um, throughout this program, I reviewed what I had already learned in AP Bio with Miss Addy and just went into higher detail of molecular uh, biology. I love this program and everyone within it. And when I grow up, I want to work in the trauma unit in the emergency department. And this program definitely has helped me understand a few more things. And having this knowledge from the program is going to truly help me in college. I want to thank you all for this opportunity. In relationship to the uh, program that these three scholars attended um, in the summer, I also would like to recognize the work and commitment of, of Mrs. Addy. Um, probably from March on, um, Mrs. Addy began emailing and asking questions about how the kids could participate and whether or not the district would support their participation. It's a very rigorous application process. Um, so for a high school the size of Hoboken to have three students um, accepted and participate was um, uh, an extreme accomplishment. So in addition to the summer program uh, that these um, young women uh, attended. We also had um, six students attend um, different programs at UMass Lowell this summer, um, also sponsored by the district um, uh, through a future physicians and future scientists program. Um, so we would like to, obviously the information the girls presented uh, tonight is pretty impressive. Um, in fact, I think that uh, uh, we're all overly um, uh, attuned to their future goals and aspirations, so congratulations. Um, I'm glad it was a great experience for you, and hopefully you can encourage others to apply and go through the same experiences that you did as well. So it's our pleasure to have you attend, and congratulations for your accomplishments. Uh, wow. Um, I'm going to suggest to stay... Um, <laughs> like really wow. 
Uh, the impressive part was the students uh, were making eye contact with us. They, they knew their material. They weren't reading the PowerPoint presentation. That's very impressive. Uh, I'm going to suggest a brief recess. Uh, if any families who are here for the recognition uh, need to quietly go home and take care of homework and other family things, dinner and such, uh, before we resume the business part of the meeting, um, we'll take a brief recess for two, two or three minutes. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. We'll resume. Uh, we'll continue with the uh, reports uh, uh, to the board. Uh, Dr. Johnson, do you have a superintendent's report? Uh, I have uh, two items to discuss. And the first one is um, there was a question that was brought up um, today regarding voting um, in the schools, um, which I thought was um, important to uh, put some critical information out there. And that is um, uh, a uh, PT at a PTO meeting, the question came up regarding uh, voting in the Calabro school. Um, because it's a small school, the issue of whether or not um, there was interference between the educational program and the actual activities of voting. Um, we uh, will be discussing the issue at um, greater length in terms of um, the actual location. It's the one area where polling can take place um, in Hoboken in that particular um, um, district. So as a result of that, um, we put measures and steps in place. However, we will be reaching out um, to the county to find out if there is a possibility of shifting that location potentially to um, a now viable option, which is down the street from Collabro. So if we can get a little more information about that, we'll pass it on. But um, the, there were a group of parents that were asking about um, election day and whether or not our schools were going to be open and so on and so forth. So um, we're looking into it and we'll provide you with additional information. Um, my next item um, has to do with um, the last uh, Board of Education uh, speaker um, came to the podium and asked the Board of Ed to uh, direct me as a superintendent to form a diversity and inclusion task force. Um, so I just wanted to say a few words about it. There, um, there really is, is not a more appropriate time um, to ensure that conversations about uh, diversity, race, ethnicity, um, equity and inclusion um, are not addressed, but also that open dialogue exists. Um, schools in general um, are to be places that all students feel comfortable and confident, not only as learners, but also as members of a larger community. And everyone can certainly learn from one another and from the experiences that each person brings to our schools, whether they're students or they're staff members. Um, uh, of any um, role within the district. And it's imperative that we aren't afraid to have those discussions and that we can together discuss uh, realities that are rooted in both evidence and perception. Um, both are in many ways woven into the fabric of not only our larger society, but also within our community and within our schools. So um, in order to best facilitate the steps that can and potentially should be taken, um, I am actually um, uh, establishing a representative advisory group consisting of parents and staff, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, um, exploring issues um, and potentially even um, uh, preschool representation through 12th grade, um, exploring the issues that um, are presented uh, in order to determine the best course of action. We currently, um, as a district, do meet with a small group of parents that provide us with extremely important insights regarding student interactions, adolescent challenges, and differences experienced between and among students. In fact, we did meet with that same group approximately a month ago and met with um, uh, the group again this morning. Um, I do recommend that that um, group be expanded um, upon in any way, shape, or form um, that the board sees fit or um, 
that I actually um, think could make the group um, even more representative to include other um, stakeholders as well. It's important to study both qualitative and quantitative data from multiple sources in order to identify the needs that are to be prioritized and focus on our next steps. My role and responsibility is to respect and consider the position and opinions of all stakeholders. And I must ensure that if um, a problem exists, that we address it. And I also must balance the climate and opinions over the next uh, few weeks in particular to ensure that our school district stays focused on the social, emotional, and academic growth of all students. At this time, it's important to know that as we as a district um, are in fact involved in some new organizations that will definitely um, help facilitate some of those conversations and will also help to serve as excellent resources uh, for the district um, holistically. One of those organizations is the North Jersey Equity and Excellence Consortium and the other is the Kane Diversity Council. Um, in addition, um, we are also in the process of um, reaching out to the Welcoming Schools organization for um, programs um, that can be used proactively um, within the schools, um, kindergarten through 12th grade. So through an advisory council, which will be guided by parameters set forth um, and reviewed um, by the Board of Education, we as a district will absolutely frame any issues that exist within our schools um, in order to serve as a model for others. So I look forward to the work and look forward to collaborating with um, stakeholders, both parents and staff members, as well as students in this journey um, and uh, look forward to um, developing and establishing a set of recommendations and suggestions um, for our future work and our future actions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Moffat, do you have uh, a minister, business just minister one, report? Yeah, one quick update, uh, just to inform the board. Uh, our external auditors that have been working on our annual audit will be returning to the district. They actually were able to move it up. They had originally thought maybe the 16th or after, but they're actually going to be due in tomorrow to continue work. Uh, they won't be here more than two weeks. Just want to inform the board of that. Thank you. Thank you. Then we'll move on to uh, committee reports. Um, communications committee, uh, Ms. Lara. Sure. Um, <clears throat> the Communications Committee met on October 4th at 1 o'clock in attendance were myself, um, Ms. Soboloff, Ms. Evans, Mr. Kupfel, and Dr. Johnson. The committee discussed the following items. The 2017 and 18 district calendar uh, will now be electronic and interactive. So usually we've been getting, um, you know, like the calendars that you, you know, hang up on the wall and it's got all, um, so now the calendar is going to be on online. It's going to be on the website and it's also going to be on the app, the Hopebook and SD app. Um, the nice thing about it is that it is interactive. So what that means is um, every month there's going to be um, like a different highlight. So you'll have the like, music department and you'll have contact information. You'll have um, videos. You'll have something on athletics. You'll have something on um, CPAC, the special education um, committee. Um, so that's, that should be rolling out um, within the next week. Um, Dr. Johnson also shared with the committee that the recent the Talks in the Park series have been going really well, very well attended. Um, so far we've had four talks, three during the day and then one in the evening. Um, we have two talks left, both of those are in the evening. So those signups are still, um, they're up on um, uh, online. And lastly, Dr. Johnson shared with the committee that within the next month, there will be similar talks um, to this Talk in the Park series, but they will be more targeted um, in, with, in particular to our fifth and sixth grade families. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Laura. Um, the curriculum, co-curricular and athletics committee was so the, I'm sorry. The committee met on Wednesday, October 4th. It was a quite a long meeting, so I'll, I'll try to just kind of hit the highlights. Um, in, in attendance was Dr. Johnson, Mr. Kuckfeld, Ms. Evans, Mr. Lahr, and myself. Uh, in terms of athletics, the committee reviewed the recent fall athletic participation data. Uh, with the fall is uh, cheering, football, boys and girls soccer, and girls volleyball. And they have a total overall participation of 155 students, which is up 
from 120 at the last season. The largest increase we're seeing in football and girls volleyball. And just since I'm talking about football here, I, I really wanted to give a quick sh uh, shout out to wish uh, Nijon Freeman a speedy recovery. I, I know that all of our thoughts have been with him since Friday. Uh, performing arts, the school musical, the 7th through 12th will be Spring Awakening. The all district musical will be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. A junior thespian club will be offered in the middle school and they will work together with the high school thespian club on the variety of speech and drama competitions that they have during the year. And then uh, to speak about the curriculum, uh, one of the items discussed was library, library media and research units. We have a relationship, the district does, with uh, Montclair State University. So the district teachers take classes here on site, and uh, graduate classes, and then they utilize their uh, required internship hours to uh, collaborate with the library here and also with the partnership that we have with the Hoboken Public Library. So those three things come together and they've worked to develop units in library and media for K to six and research units for grades fifth and sixth. Uh, there is in all schools a theatrical artist in residence program which has begun for grades K to two and that will cover all aspects of theater and grades sixth, seventh and eighth will uh, have an opportunity to take musical theater. Uh, the district fifth graders will participate in the statewide uh, Battle of the Books competition. In the middle school, the units of social studies have been uh, reworked, updated, and in the seventh grade now they include foundations of democracy and civics, and in eighth grade there's a focus on world geography and cultures. The middle school's exploration after school program is set to begin on Monday, October 16th. That is their after school program, so that will offer homework support and uh, personal planning, executive uh, kind of function planning. Then there's a variety of clubs like the Junior Thespians Clubs, Fitness Clubs, Cyber Patriots, Model UN, Stock Market, among others, and intramural sports, which will include volleyball, bowling, swimming, and track. There will also be leadership opportunities at that time, such as the peer leadership program and the student council. All the clubs and programs are offered at no cost, and dinner is provided for any student participating. Uh, the Hoboken High School is once again participating in the uh, Rutgers Pre-Med Honors Program. Uh, almost, uh, almost 20 students, I think, are participating, and that was up an increase from last year. Uh, the district has applied for participation in the Seal of Biliteracy Program. Uh, this program will allow eligible students who are proficient in speaking, reading, or writing one or more world language, in addition to English, to receive a certificate of biliteracy which will be attached then to their transcript for um, applying to college or for a job. Uh, the Hoboken High School will host the New Jersey Makers Day, and the entire high school will be participating, and our project Lead the Way students will lead those activities. Uh, the Harvard Model Congress class and clubs are underway, and they are exploring a convention location change this year. Usually it's in San Francisco, or sometimes Boston. This year they're exploring uh, Madrid. Uh, the Project Lead the Way biomedical science team at Hoboken High is exploring a uh, possible visit for, to science and medical facilities in Japan. And so that's my report for that committee. But then uh, Jennifer Evans and I also sit on a different committee at the high school, so if I could report on that, if that's okay. Uh, we sit on the student-based youth center community liaison board. And uh, that's always one of my favorites. There's about 20 to 25 local um, businesses and community members, and they all come together. And we sort of update each other on whatever collaborations are working or partnerships or whatever they're doing, if it's the hospital or uh, a mental health facility. And so I'm just going to uh, mention a few. Um, the, someone was there from True Mentors, and they connect Hoboken High School students with local internships, and they also offer mentoring. And we also have a partnership with Wiley, who also offers internships. And True Mentors was allowing those interns also to take, to participate, participate in their workshops that they have for um, interns. Uh, the guidance department was there, and they discussed their coffee with counselors once a month. They discussed things like NJSA, AA clearinghouse for athletes, college visits, FAFSA, and then they also contact the parents on important dates as those uh, applications come up. Uh, there was someone there from the Hoboken Public Library. We talked about some of the things that they're doing for teens in the library and also some of the partnerships that they have in the high school. 
and then the group was able to tour the building. We saw the biomedical lab, the engineering lab, and the urban farm. And if I'm correct, and I think I am, that on October 25th is the Hoboken High School Showcase of Excellence, so the community would then be able to come in and also view, take a tour and view those labs as well. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Madigan asked that I uh, fill in for him tonight on the uh, facilities uh, committee report, uh, of which there is none. Uh, there, is, there was no facilities committee meeting this month, uh, and there's nothing unusual on the agenda other than two uh, facilities requests. Uh, however, uh, instead, the, uh, what we're calling the ad hoc long-range facilities subcommittee, which comprises members of the facility committee, met on October 26th. Uh, in attendance were Dr. Johnson, uh, Mr. Callagy, Ms. Angley, Mr. Manigan, Ms. Soboloff, and me. Uh, the subcommittee had a broad discussion about our facilities, capacity, uh, and enrollment trends, uh, and the undertaking of the demographic study will need to more accurately project enrollment into the future. Uh, the subcommittee set as its goal uh, a deadline of April 2018. Uh, so. Uh, uh, or prior, prior to April 2018, to present to the board for its consideration uh, the subcommittee's uh, conclusions about projected enroll uh, student enrollment, uh, the capacity and feasibility of its existing facilities, uh, possible conceptual plans to address the district's long-term facility needs, and a recommended action plan. And by that, I don't mean a solution, but just sort of a framework for the board to consider uh, the direction uh, uh, moving forward. Uh, also, the subcommittee sent uh, two representatives, uh, we were available, uh, Ms. Sobolov and myself, uh, to attend the North End Redevelopment Plan Community Meeting that was held on September 29th, and we did. I mean, there's no dis discussion there, but we just wanted to listen to the, what the community is talking about uh, uh, in terms of North End development and how it might affect uh, student enrollment uh, or any other plans. So we're, we're just trying to keep a, uh, an ear open and eye on what's happening. <coughs> Uh, that concludes that facilities committee report, and that would go next to Ms. Angley for finance. Sure. <clears throat> the finance committee met on Tuesday, October 3rd at 7.30. In attendance were Dr. Johnson, Mr. Moffitt, Mr. Klepfel, Mr. Biancamano, Mr. McNamara, and myself. The committee reviewed all agenda items and recommend all for board approval. Um, I just wanted to point out a few things on the agenda. Um, Tuition or contracts are always a topic of discussion. So there are a few um, agenda items that relate to contracts tonight. 10.07 contracts, all are renewals except for one, um, which is a new payment for the district. 10.07, we have a contract um, which we've had for the last uh, number of years with the Hoboken Historical Museum. Um, the amount on the agenda is a not to exceed amount. So um, it doesn't mean we'll, we'll pay that, but um, depending on the number of classes, pre-K through 12, that utilize the um, educational program visits um, will determine the expense. Um, 10.08, we have a Lee Hawkins student who is um, enrolled in our multiple disabled ABA program, so that is an incoming student. Uh, we have some agenda, um, I'm sorry, donations on the agenda tonight. The Wallace PTO is donating um, and sponsoring some field trips to Demarest Farms and Math Magic. So thank you to the Wallace PTO. And the New York Jets Foundation named Keon Walker as Gatorade Coach of the Week, along with a $2,000 donation to the Hoboken High School football program and athletic program. So congratulations to Mr. Walker. Um, other. Uh, discussed, other items discussed were um, the process around tracking and collecting unpaid lunch balances related to the 2016-2017 school year, and we discussed the auditors coming back in to wrap up the audit. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Angley. Uh, and Ms. Evans, uh, Governance and Personnel? Sure. So the Governance and Personnel Committee met on October 3rd in attendance were Ms. Montgomery, Ms. Soboloff, Mr. Klupfel, Superintendent Johnson, and myself. We reviewed all agenda items and recommend all for approval tonight. I'll just go through a few of the items that um, generated some conversation and questions. Um, item 9.01, we have one retirement on the agenda. Mr. Vito Quochi is retiring. He's been a teacher in the district for 39 years. Um, and uh, he 
um, actually pointed this out in the letter he sent in that he has had perfect attendance for the last 21 years. Oh, I think that's so pretty impressive. Um, we would like to thank him for his years of service, his dedication to the students, and we wish him all the best. Um, item 9.08, we have some. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, item 9.08, we have some um, exciting uh, assemblies going on in our schools. Um, Ms. Amy Warshawski is a certified life coach and she'll be returning to the personal growth period at the high school uh, and she'll be presenting a series of workshops and this is grant funded through the Student Center. Um, Broadway veteran Ms. Allison Strong will be discussing her stage experience and will also perform for the sixth grade musical theater uh, class at Wallace School and we are investigating if this is something she could do at all of our schools. Um, items 9.18 through 9.22 are approval of co-curricular appointments at the high school and elementary schools and you'll see that these are um, the clubs that will be offered at the schools uh, through the year. Items 9.23 and 9.24 are approval of the middle school um, advisors, coaches, and after school positions. And um, the after school program at the middle school starts um, this coming Monday. And so this is a program that will incorporate the clubs that we've traditionally had for the middle schoolers. It'll have um, academic support and also dinner for students who would like to do that. So that's a really exciting new program coming up. Um, we also discussed um, other items, a couple partnerships with local institutions, also for the um, middle school after school program, which is called Explorations. We're partnering with uh, Stevens Institute of Technology. So some of their students will be coming over and working with our students um, to provide academic tutoring during the after school program. And um, we also discussed the work that the Hoboken Public Library will be doing in our elementary schools. Um, uh, just a couple of things that have been accomplished um, by our staff. Um, Miss Maria Monblatt, a music teacher, will be a guest lecturer at Catholic University this year. And two of our high school math teachers, Ms. Christine Caradonio and Matthew Chang, have been accepted to the MathQuest Fellowship Program. Uh, so congratulations to all three of them. And then finally, um, we discussed parking at Brandt School. Uh, and if you've been around Brandt, you'll see that we've instituted some um, cones and other strategies to uh, discourage parking in the crosswalks. So um, this is just something that we really can't have as it causes students to have to walk into the roadway. Um, and we, just a very dangerous situation. So. Uh, we talked about this and ask everyone to be aware. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, board members, are there any uh, questions or observations for anyone on the committee reports? Um, can I, 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 I'm not sure if Irene mentioned it, um, the, or Jen, the intramural um, sports at the mm -hmm. middle school as part of the explorations program. Mm -hmm. That's exciting not. to me, so. <laughs> yeah. um, can you say them again? Um, I think Irene, you might have. I didn't have them, but uh, they might be. Um, it was uh, volleyball, bowling, swimming, and track were, were the ones that were discussed. Uh, if there's nothing uh, on committee reports, then I will uh, move to public comments on agenda items. Uh, Mr. Moffitt? I have no one listed here for agenda items only. The uh, five speakers are all listed in agenda uh, non-agenda items at the end of the Okay, you want to bring that up then? We'll uh, go through the... Uh... Our governance allows for uh, a consent agenda um, on all items on the agenda. Is there a motion? Motion. That's Irene. Uh, is there a second? Second. 
Ms. Delara. Uh, any comments? Yes. There is. Mr. Biancomano. Thank you. I'll be very, very brief. Dr. Johnson, I brought this up at the last meeting regarding the uh, resignations of teachers this early on in the year. And tonight we have three resignations, obviously without getting into any personnel info, we have three resignations tonight and two of them are going to be filled immediately tonight, which is great, but the third one is not. And it's just, again, it's a, it's a little concerning to me when we have a little instability this early on in the year. Um, so I guess if you could just go over the process of uh, what happens now the at the middle school sign uh, at the middle school for grade eight i mean is is there going to be a sub in there is there going to be a leave replacement until the next meeting where we hire a teacher uh, so i'm just curious if you can talk to me or talk to us about the background yes yeah, so if uh, there is um, a substitute assigned to the room um, at this point the um, middle school principal and the assistant superintendent are actively interviewing. Uh, I think they interviewed um, three or four candidates uh, last week um, with one candidate that they were um, doing some reference checks on. Um, in the meantime, there are uh, two more interviews scheduled for the middle of this week, Wednesday, uh, which is actually tomorrow. So uh, they will do that as well. And uh, as soon as they are comfortable putting a recommendation forward for a permanent replacement, um, they will, will do so. And then we won't be able to approve it until the next meeting. So therefore, a substitute would have to stay in for over a month now. So what will happen on something like that pending the uh, background check, et cetera, um, I would, I can do one of two things, and that is to um, um, keep the substitute in the room as you indicated. Um, the second thing would be to present to the board um, through uh, kind of an independent and straw poll um, with all of the credentials and the background check being completed, um, the ability to potentially put the individual in the classroom along with the substitute or another certified professional until the board approves it. Um, but uh, Mr. Fitzhu and Dr. Davis are um, also in the process of designing an educational um, plan to be able to provide um, retroactive uh, lessons and different delivery for students um, in the case of any kind of uh, gaps that may have occurred in the uh, curriculum as a result of a substitute. Yeah, and, and, and obviously, I mean, resignations do happen in the beginning of the year. I mean, uh, I just want to make sure that at least the parents of those grade eight students at the middle school can feel a little more secure with a more permanent teacher instead of just a substitute. Uh, 9.13, the resignations of the athletic department followed by the appointment of one assistant coach. Are, are we just, are we going from two to one assistant, well, there's several assistant coaches, but is there still a vacancy for an assistant football coach? There's one um, vacancy remaining for an assistant coach. Okay, and the two coaches that did resign, did, did they start the season and then we're going to have to compensate them for the work that they have already done or did they resign before the season or um, based on um, coach walker one of them started the um, season but as a result of work commitments um, needed right. to uh, stop and the other um, did not attend any practices or games which is why retroactively we're recently so right gotcha okay and then one other quick item, and, and we brought this up in, in the uh, finance committee, um, and in terms of the facility request, the first one, the Columbus Con Condominium Association, there's still no fee that's going to be charged? Um, I think Mr. Moffitt discussed that with Mr. Calhoun. Right, it, apparently this is a historical approach, meaning we, in the past we have not charged for the use of that area in our facility, so we're gonna continue that. So what you see here tonight is with, with no fee. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else comments, questions? Then we move to the vote. Mr. Moffat? Ms. Angley? Yes. Mr. Biancomano? No on the minutes, 6.01, 6.02, 6.03. Yes on everything else. Ms. Delara? Yes. 
Ms. Evans? Abstain on 6.03 and yes on everything else. Mr. McNamara? Yes. Ms. Sobolo? Yes. And Mr. Klupfel? Uh, I'm going to have to abstain on uh, 9.17 and 10.04 and vote yes on everything else. Motion's passed. That passes, thank you. I understand we have people signed up to speak on non-agenda items. All right, uh, the first individual I have is uh, Lee Heiser. Um, I neglected to bring the big time clock, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll, do the count, I'll do the best I can. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm just going to go minutes. one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three <laughs> Mississippi while you're talking. Well, Courtney's listed as, as number two, so we're going to condense it from 10 to 5, if that's okay with you. <laughs> but uh, look, we, we appreciate it. It's been a nice evening. There's a lot of good things obviously happening, and uh, we're excited to see all these kids uh, doing so well and thriving, and it's good. It's really a good sign. Uh, we obviously uh, sent a letter uh, to all of the board members uh, yesterday as we've been giving a lot of thought to this diversity and, uh, inclu diversity and, and inclusion task force. And uh, it obviously, you know, we, we care a lot about this. And to that end, I, um, as I mentioned in the letter, and thank you for those of you who got back to me, um, that uh, we provided you with a copy of this book written by a Columbia professor uh, Dr. Daryl Wing Su, who wrote a book called Race Talk and the Conspiracy of Silence. And we're reading it. We haven't gotten through it yet, but we're, we're going through it. And we hope that you, uh, since this is a, a, uh, a house of learning and an educational uh, experience for all of us, I think uh, it would be great if um, you guys considered reading it and sharing it. And if it mattered to you uh, somewhere down the line and you felt that it would be worthwhile for your faculty to have it, we would be willing to donate those books to your entire faculty of the entire district. So just know that as we go down this. I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Johnson's remarks. Um, I was the last person to speak about this in the last meeting, I think. And um, I, I do um, applaud the fact that you are thinking about it. Um, I am, I'll have some reservations about how you're going to put this together. Um, what the makeup of that committee is going to be, uh, how you're going to arrive at those people, um, not just faculty, students, uh, parents, and, and so forth, but, you know, where do they come from, um, and so forth. And I think, you know, in terms of being inclusive, truly inclusive, I think it's really important uh, that the, uh, the form matters just as much as the substance will as you outline this uh, for the board. And I think, you know, again, as we asked the board last time to consider this diversity and inclusion task force, we do believe it's important enough um, for the children's experience throughout the district um, that we have somebody that takes a leadership role in this for the, the entire district. In other words, somebody who's working in the high school with committees there, somebody who's working in all the elementary schools. So there's liaisons and there's a connection uh, so that the entire district is participating in what we think it will be a, a very meaningful experience for everybody and grow the, the, um, the culture of, the, uh, of competency here in, in Hoboken School District. So that's all I think we had to say. Is there anything else that you want to add? Or? Um, I just want to add that. I know it just may seem like it's, it's when we talk about race and we talk about having a conversation that it may just seem like, uh, you know, it's all about making sure, certainly it's important for the emotional well-being for children, but I also um, think that it also shapes how they view their education, it shapes um, how they perform, it shapes how they're treated throughout the district. And so as we think about things like closing the achievement gap, as we think about things like, um, you know, uh, uh, helping children break uh, cycles of poverty, you know, these conversations are, are, are bigger than just, than, than just making sure that, you know, we're all getting along. That's, that's important, and being unified on those shared aspirations are important, but I think also raising the entire district up is, is really should be the ultimate goal, so. Tom should have a copy of the book for you uh, for the evening. Thank you very much for your time. 
Yes, I was going to add that uh, uh, Mr. Pizer and uh, Ms. Wicks gave me a box of books. I've got, I've got them right here, so board members, uh, see me before you leave. <laughs> uh, next speaker, please. Um, well, uh, the number three speaker looks like it's been crossed out, um, and I'm going to say the fourth one is Suzanne. I can't quite make out the second. <laughs> Et cetera, in the Hoboken public school system has been in process for a while, it appears. Um, and I actually am very glad to hear about the council that you're putting together. I would love to be considered for the advisory council. But I was coming tonight to start a conversation, which obviously has started, that's not simply about inclusivity and diversity in terms of rhetoric or discussion, but what I'm seeing within the Hoboken school system as de facto segregation and increasing gentrification. And I'd really like to know sort of where we're moving to address these issues and whether that is something that's on the table. I mean, from what I've heard and from what I'm seeing in the statistics I could find at least, as far as I know, Hoboken has a preschool, a free preschool program because we were an Abbott district. Mm -hmm. And so the reason we have this is to cater to low income families. I found, I find it alarming that this year there is a wait list for this program and some of the neediest children in this community cannot find spaces in this program because of an increasing trend of people moving into Hoboken, often transient. They're here for the early years of education and then they move on to the suburbs. But they're moving here because we have these free pre-K programs. But the very children for whom these pre-K programs were, cre were created now cannot benefit from them. I find it interesting that Brandt School, one of the best schools in Hoboken, and one of the largest pre-K programs, as far as I understand, in Hoboken, is a school that is 73% white and only 8% low income. If the pre-K program is made to cater to low income children, how is it possible that a school at which only 8% of those children actually qualify has one of the largest populations. So in any case, this is just something I wanted to, be, to put on the table. And as someone myself who was pushed out of Brandt for kindergarten and sent over to Wallace for no reason that I can discernibly figure out, um, I think it's important that this community continue to make sure when we speak of education for all of our children that we truly mean all and the ones who initially were here and continue to be the foundation of Hoboken. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your time. Can you, just for the record, because you began speaking, can you state your name and address this? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Suzanne Schneider okay. and I live at 1014 Hudson. Okay. We need that for the minutes. Okay, no Thank problem. You. And it, you can also use it to contact me for the advisory committee if you're looking for people. Thank, thank you. Thank you. The last speaker I have is Helen Bishop. Hi, I'm Helen Bishop, 700 First Street. I'm also the Connors PTO co-president this year. And I just wanted to come here and talk about um, how we're trying to build a better community feel for the school and also um, with the Southwest community itself. So um, we have a couple fundraisers that we're doing. Uh, similar to last year, we're doing the Chipotle uh, fundraiser and 50% of the proceeds on a particular day will go back to the PTO and I'll um, give you the dates for that. It should be coming up in the next month or two. And I also invite you to the Connors Fall Fest held on Saturday, November 4th, 12 to 2 p.m. And I hope to see some of you there. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to say anything? Uh, there's no need for executive session tonight, so uh, that concludes the business of the board. Um, would anybody like to make a motion to close? Motion. Second. That's Ms. Sobolov uh, motion and Mr. Biancomano second.
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned.